Welcome everyone to another episode of Keto Chat. I am your host, Carol Freeman. I am a board certified keto nutrition specialist. Oh my gosh, thank you for being here. I've been running these live shows. I did take last night off, but so far this is I think our ninth one that we've been doing. And my goal here is just to bring you all kinds of things that are in support of optimal health, well-being, both mentally and physically. And tonight's episode is all about arts and crafts to bring you joy. Many of us are stuck at home right now. We've got a lot of extra time on our hands. We might also have some young'uns at home that we need to entertain. And so if you need art class or if you need some more hobbies and, and uh, engagement with your young'uns at home, or if you're an adult and looking for something to do with your free time, hey, check it out tonight. We've got origami, calligraphy, and painting. So I can't wait to share all of these things with you all. So uh, let's first welcome all of our guests. We have Stephanie Nam, local Hi. Seattle area. And well, I guess all of them are. Uh, we also have Ashley Smith. Hey, y'all. And joining us shortly, we have Amber Massman. She'll be in studio very quickly. Thank you all of us watching. So um, for those of you who are watching, just type in the comments, where are you joining us from? Share with us. We're all gonna be, this is gonna be interactive. Um, some questions and sharing and all of that is very much encouraged. Um, so up first, we're going to have drum roll, Stephanie Nam. Uh, Stephanie is a, a Seattle-based calligrapher and stationary designer. She's been creating all of her life and fell in love with calligraphy. Writing by hand is a wonderful escape from an increasingly digital world. She's the owner of Char uh, oh man, Car is it Caracol? Is that how you say that? Caracol Creative, which specializes in custom wedding stationery and unique gifts. Oh my gosh, that sounds like amazingly beautiful, special wedding stationery. So welcome everyone to Stephanie. Hi, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I just I'm a calligrapher, and a lot of people ask, like, um, you know, is that a, something that you could like earn? And, uh, living off of um, what kind of things do you do? Um, like mentioned in my bio, I do a lot of um, wedding stationery and designs. So I brought some samples here of different yeah. things. I uh, have like an invitation, a um, mm -hmm. lot of like envelope addressing and things. Um, there's around different things like this is the menu. Mm -hmm. so, like, and then I also make like design like gifts and cards that I'll like digitize and draw um, and then print out to sell. So yeah, and I've also, um, I teach uh, in-person workshops in Seattle. Well, I did for a while. <laughs> <And so she's laughs> <working. Yeah. clears throat> Again, um, uh, yeah, I brought some tools and stuff. I don't know. I know they're like kind of like specialized tools, so you probably don't have them at home, but you know, if you are interested in learning, you could, uh, yeah, see what it looks like, I guess. Well, I'm sure that uh, people could order on Amazon eventually, get to their house at one time or another. Um, I yeah. also sell um, beginner calligraphy kits. Oh, um, cool. Are you, have you branched out into teaching classes online or is this going to be your first adventure uh, into that? No, I haven't done that yet. So. Okay. Well, well, well uh, if you, if anyone's interested in having some personal instruction, we'll have some contact info for Stephanie after this as well. I took, so in middle school, well, that was a long time ago, like 35 years ago or something like that. I took a um, calligraphy class. We had, I forgot what it was called, but like once a year, we'd have these special classes that we could take that were very different than what was normal. And I took a calligraphy class. And at that time I had one felt tip pen that had like the wedge on it. Oh, and yeah. they, ta they taught us the basics of how to do it. And I had a lot of fun with it then. So I was really excited when you reached out to, uh, to share. I brought, so like I have uh, mostly I teach using uh, this, like the nib and pen. Okay. Um, so that's more traditional. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I also have, like, these kinds of, like, brush markers. I don't know if this is more what you were talking about, like, a tip. Um, so yeah. So you can find 
uh, like in all sorts of places. Um, oh, let, like a paintbrush tip on it. No, this was this was a long time ago, Stephanie. So we had very little choices. <laughs> Well, yeah, so this is like something more accessible if you're like interested in learning hand lettering, but you don't, um, you don't have any supplies at home, but you, a lot of people like start out with like making fancy like bullet journal pages and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, bet, I bet people have some crafty ink pens somewhere in a drawer somewhere that are gathering dust that they might be able to try this already. Yeah. And you can also use a regular pen and kind of like um, color it in but that's a little bit more difficult. Would it work with, if people have crayons at home, could that work too, or? Um, yeah, I could show like a short demo, I guess, using like something you would have at home. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's, do, let's do a couple of them. What, well, go ahead and, and share with us what you have planned. So again, this is interactive. Any of you watching, please ask questions and, um, Okay. Perhaps, uh, perhaps somebody watching right now might have a word that you might like to see Stephanie create for us. We'll we'll uh, we'll see what we get request wise. No dirty words. Now be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I um, I'll start with like a brush pen then. So, um, let's see. What should I write about tranquility? Ooh, that's nice. I don't know if this will be upside down. Can you see it? So yeah, this is the brush brush pen. So basically, um, you'll like you want to push a little bit. Um, I don't know. If this is better. I think it's work. It's it's uh it's coming through fine. Yeah, I think it's okay. I can't really see the screen. <laughs> <laughs> So basically what you do with the brush is the same as with the pen, but you just uh, push down a little bit harder when you're going on down on the down okay. So that it makes a much thicker line than when you're going up, you know, you'll make it a lot thinner. I don't think. Ooh, what, do you, what do you think about how like right now handwriting is such a lost art? Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like it's still important, and a lot of people do come in saying like, "My handwriting's so bad, so I want to like yeah. learn to make it look better." And um, or I think people are kind of going back to like writing letters and stuff, and so I see. Yeah, I think that's. A fun use for it, especially now, like when you want to keep in touch with people. But yeah, um, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of like video chats and stuff you can do, but uh, <laughs> getting the letter is really special, you know, it's different. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we've got Nancy Wood is watching, and she just commented that hello, Craft Night, love it. Thank you for watching, Nancy. Do you have a uh, word you'd like to see Stephanie mm -hmm. create? How so? How did you get started in this art? I'm gonna call, I, all of these are really arts that we're doing tonight. So, um, how, how did I get started? I, I, um, I guess I just always like have done kind of art, art in different mediums. Like I did, I used to draw for a long time. Um, and I'd like sew clothes and do like crochet and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, and then I just started calligraphy because I just always want to try new things. Um, okay. And that's like, something that I've kind of stuck with for quite a few years. The other things I kind of like stopped doing, I guess, after I tried it out. Um, I that pen is so interesting. It must be initially like the angle with it with your mind is trying to tell you to hold it a different way. Oh, oops. Oh, hello, Nancy. Look at that. You wrote your name. That's beautiful. Yeah, the pen is uh, different because it's uh, it's uh, an oblique pen. So it's for writing like a slant pen. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's just like, I think it's just so, I guess, satisfying to do. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I always had trouble like painting because it'd be like, um, you'd have to just draw or like you start with like a blank sheet of paper. And, and for me, like I like having more parameters, I guess. Right, so, yeah. Which is at least you know what you're going to be writing. Yeah, so even if I'm like trying to design like how a quote will look or something. Yeah. To, like, like when I made this quote. Oh, cool. So it's like in the shape of the, of the moon. But even when I'm like trying to design that or something, I'll have an idea. And then I don't know. I just feel like it's a lot easier for me to do that because like I okay. guess starting from nothing is a little bit overwhelming yeah. sometimes what um is this something that you think people that aren't very artsy or like it what it, what if somebody came to you and they're like oh man my handwriting is terrible would you tell them like well you better give up and never try this or do you think there's hope for somebody that feels like they have bad handwriting and learning this um i feel like that happens a lot um but I don't think that, I think your handwriting really doesn't have anything to do with it at all. Like, okay. when I write with a pen, like a ballpoint pen, it looks different than when I okay. write with this pen. So, um, yeah, a lot of people say that, but I think it doesn't have anything to do with it. So, I think any, anyone can learn. It just takes, like, a lot of repetition. So, okay. a lot of people <clears throat> do it as, like, um, like, like there's a lot of calligraphy and like brush lettering in uh, monasteries and stuff. Like monks learn it as an art because it is very meditative. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of other like benefits to this. Do um, you have tips tips for somebody getting started? Like, what if somebody ordered one of your beginner kits? Like, what would you recommend as far as how do they start to you know, with that first stroke or how do they look at the whole word and kind of think about how they're going to make it so beautiful? Um, yeah, I guess I, uh, I guess I have, uh, I include like a booklet in there and then I, uh, kind of tell, kind of go into detail about how to begin. Um, oh, okay. Because a lot of people have never used this kind of pen before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a lot about like the posture because when you're writing with a normal pen, it the posture is very different. So once you get that down and kind of know the mechanics of how the pen works, um, that's pretty much the bulk of like starting. And then you know, from there, it's mostly practice. Right now. Any any. Thing that you can share now or is it something that people can um, should order your book to get to know that or um, about how to get started yeah yeah uh, I could show I just don't know how close I could get to the camera <laughs> like uh, I don't know thing Yeah, Ooh, I just, um, I'm holding it. Oh, your paper has a grid on it. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the, a drawing of the nib. And okay. basically when you push down, the tines separate. Okay. So that's how you get the thicker line. So when you're ah. writing um, with the downstroke, so then you'll just dip um, so you can see it with the pen, I guess. It kind of oh, separates yeah. very oh, okay. Oh, that's very helpful. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then you just, when you're going down, you'll have that thicker line than when you're going up. So it's kind of the basics of how it looks different from your ordinary ballpoint pen, which right. would have the same width. And do you have like a, so actually you're drawing on like a vellum type paper and then you can see the grids behind it. Is that what you're doing right now? Uh, no, this is just a grid paper. It's just like a okay. practice pad. Okay. Yeah, it's like a very smooth paper, so it's good for this kind oh, of wait, paper. Wait, the line height the same for all of your letters then? Okay. Yeah, and then it helps you to yeah keep it even and stuff. 
just for practicing, not anything yeah. you use for, yeah. So essentially, so for calligraphy, one of the um, one of the things you're going to need is either the the I don't know what the pen is called that you're showing there, or the paint pen, which is going to vary the thickness of the line. So that looks like it's one of the hallmarks necessary yeah. to create calligraphy is to have um, some kind of pen device that is going to be able to vary the thickness of the the line that you're drawing. Yeah. There. Cause that's just the base of how it yeah. looks. But then there's also something called like faux oligraphy, which is basically like if I had just a normal pen mm -hmm. like this, then I could just kind of write in cursive. Okay. Like in like <laughs> a, I guess like a fancier style than you would normally. Um, and then to get that look of getting the downstrokes, you would just kind of like make the downstrokes thicker. Okay. But obviously this takes a lot more time, but you'll get the same look if you just are okay. practicing your letter forms. That's a way that people could do it at home if you don't actually have a special pen. Okay. And that's yeah. a good way to think about it then. The downstrokes are thicker. So anything that's a mm -hmm. downstroke, that's where you want to see it thicker. Okay. Yeah. Ah, very good. That's a great tip. Okay. Anyone else watching right now have another word that you'd like to see Stephanie create? Right? I think this would be fun challenge now. If any of you, um, some of you out there, okay, so I know some people are watching are like, I don't have any time for anything. That's fine. <laughs> but a lot of people have a lot of free time. What yeah. if you wrote a handwritten letter or a card to one of your family members or uh, a friend that you haven't talked to in a long time? You could, you can do this because she just showed you how to do it with a pen you have at home. You don't even need a special pen right now. Yeah, and people people love getting letters. I write people letters all the time just oh. to, for fun, and then people are always so happy to get it. <laughs> even if you don't, even if you just handwrite it, and not. and I can. I can see as you're writing as well that it can, can be um, really relaxing and and almost like a meditative practice. Yeah. Um, because you have to go slow and be methodical and you can't be in a hurry when you're doing this, can you? <clears throat> exactly. And um, when you're when you're starting, you'll have to, you'll do a lot of like um, writing the same letter over and over to practice. Okay. So I think oh, yeah. that's also kind of like meditative also to just yeah. keep, keep going. Cause this is something you can't, you can't do when you're scrolling on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't do this and be on Facebook or Instagram at all. This is going to be full mind practice. So. Ashley, have you ever done calligraphy? I have. Okay. How about you, Tambor? Oh, I mess around. I work, I have to write signs. So I do a lot of shaded lettering and, uh, okay. chalk, but not calligraphy. <clears throat> do you have, is okay. this like your favorite script? Do you do other scripts, Stephanie, or? Um, I do like slightly different styles, but no, I don't do any traditional, um, styles so they'll have like and letter yeah like gothic or oh i keep spelling it wrong i keep talking and then <laughs> it's writing at the same yeah. time <laughs> that, that shows how you have to be fully I present when you're doing part. Part. yeah that, that's what will happen if you are <laughs> trying to multitask califacery <laughs> <laughs> i did it twice too i'm like okay <laughs> i'll just end it end it here that's good Ashley, do you have any questions for Stephanie? No, I just, um, I think it's really great to send people letters. My kids look forward to them we send them off to our grandparents. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's appreciated. I um, myself might, oh, go ahead. I say typos, they don't mind. <laughs> yeah. No, and I, I found, um, so I, I, up through middle school and high school, I was always very much a uh, left brain person with like science and math and facts. And I 
grew up with a mom who was very creative and was always into all kinds of crafts. So she's done the pore painting and crochet and stamping and all kinds of things. And I resisted that as a child because, you know, you want to be different than your parents. I'm not going to be like that. Um, but I found as I got into my 20s and had my child that I had a creative side and I went through different waves of different things that I've done. And I've done um, uh, scrapbooking and I've done card making. Um, I got into nail art, which can be very consuming as well. Um, I've done, I, I did calligraphy way back in middle school. And then I got into stand-up comedy, my current creative outlet. And I, all of the other ones, I've done jewelry making as well as another one I've done. Um, and uh, I, I've always had like one thing I'm doing at a time that's my creative outlet. And then I seem to be consumed with just that one thing. And then I yeah. move on to the next. So I don't have any crafty creative outlet right now, except the stand up comedy back when I was doing that. So um, are, do the rest of you find that? Do you find like um, you're into one thing or do you have like multiple things all at one time that you're really into or? I mean, I'm a living, breathing walk of creative expression every single day. I cannot <laughs> suppress it no matter what I do. It is my oh. own function. <laughs> <laughs> you are art. Your whole person is art. Nancy is asking what nail art is. Oh, my God. Oh, it's painting. Um, Nancy, it's painting. It's fingernail art. So uh, I used to have probably... I don't know, 200 bottles of nail polish and all the implements. And I would do, um, uh, oh my gosh, just intricate design. Nail nails? I, I don't watch that one. I had a couple of them that I subscribed to, you know, two, oh, more than two years ago when I first, before I did comedy. And um, I, it, it's one of those that like, it takes a while to even get to the point that um, you can, you can do any of it. And then there's techniques and things like that, but I haven't, I haven't done any of that in a while. And then when I didn't do any nail art for a long time, I gave all of it away. And now that we can't uh, go out and get, I can't get a pedicure anymore. I just finally ordered a couple of bottles of nail polish <laughs> online. Cause I'm like, I gotta paint, paint them somehow. So I might be getting back into nail art soon. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and Nancy Sharon that she's a card maker. I've done that as well. Um, doing the, card making too. So um, yeah. Uh, Stephanie, anything else that you would like to share about calligraphy or? Um, um, I guess like through the workshops I've got, I've um, seen a lot of people, you know, do it for the first time ever, like of different artistic backgrounds, like having no experience in any kind of art and like you know really being into it and I guess universally everyone said that it's been it has like a very calming effect on them and then mm -hmm. like, they it and want to keep doing it at home so yeah I recommend people to try it yeah it seems like it's a um it's got to be an exercise in mindfulness because you've got to be focused just on that like in that moment you can't be thinking about the past or the present, the present or the future, not the present, but the past or the future. You're just in that moment. Yeah. And I find yeah. that it's easier to like focus on, on one thing like calligraphy or, you know, like some people find it easier to focus when they're doing like movement, like yoga or something rather than mm -hmm. just pure like meditation, which is sometimes harder to focus like on something more subtle like your breath. So yeah, I think trying like different things. That's been good for me. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much. If anybody that's watching has any more questions for Stephanie, uh, please type them in the comment, the chat box there. Um, and up next, we have the wonderful Tamber Matsman. Um, Tamber grew up in Montana, where she was raised by feral beatnik cowboys. Wildly overdressed for every occasion, Tamber has been called the feminist. But I can't, even, why can't I say that? Feminist Fatal, fat, fat, I can say. <laughs> Feminist Fatal. Oh, uh, of Seattle Comedy. You can see her outfits, comedy and origami on Instagram at the Glam Am Tam. Oh, there we go. The Glam Am Tam. I'm going to type that up as a banner and put that on there so we can, we can get it. Uh, and on her website at 
tam.re. She got her own name as a full website. All right, welcome, Tamber, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm here today to show you some origami. I did, I don't know if you can see in the waiting room, Carol, I have my phone pointed downward so I can, we can. Oh, can yeah, let's that. put both of them in here. That's cool. I hadn't even thought about that, but. Hi. 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 Look at that. So yeah. I'm going to show you. This is um, so smart. How did, oh, I'm going to use this for another one. <laughs> I have a phone and an iPad, thanks to um, white privilege. Uh, so, um, all right, let's go. Uh, origami. I love origami because it, you take this two-dimensional object and you turn it into a three-dimensional object. So like this flower, this is what we're gonna be making today. And uh, it's it's an incredible act of creation. You get to- so Anybody has a post-it note, this will work, right? Yeah, you can do it with any square piece of paper or if okay. you have like an oblong piece of paper, this is what you can do. So here's like a rectangle. Um, you You bend it down like this. Then you fold down across the bottom. So you see there's like this flap, this yeah. flap. And then you, so you fold, fold it. So this edge hits this edge here like that. And then you um, crease along that edge. And then, okay, this is a little bit forbidden given the day. And, but this is how I always do it is lick, lick it. your finger. <laughs> I know. Well, if you live by yourself, you're okay. So exactly, and I did absolutely wash my hands before I came in, and then you just tear it along that fold, and voila, a square piece of paper. Um, so I'm using origami paper. It's two sided. It's printed on both sides, so you can tell what I'm doing. Pretty simple. So the first thing we're gonna do is fold a very basic origami square base. So, and that's just you fold it like that one edge to this edge you want to get it as tight as possible one and so the great thing about roses i did 365 days of roses in 2018 i folded a rose well wow. every single day and uh several different varieties of roses there's always a different pattern this is one of the most basic traditional origami roses and so then you fold it the other way going that way so you turn your square into four squares so when you unfold it you can see the creases just i think they call it hot dog style both times both directions and then you're going to fold it sandwich wedge style in the opposite direction so so these folds go this way this is called a mountain fold and then um and then we're going to make a valley fold and once you look at it, that'll kind of make sense to you. A mountain fold is pointy on the top, on the fold, and a valley fold is uh, um, an inverted V. So yeah, just fold like that, fold like that. Undo, see, it's a valley. It's a little trickier with the post-it because it wants to stick, but I'm getting yeah, it. I'm getting yeah, yeah, that is an issue with the post-it. Um, but at least I got something on hand. I got a whole All bunch right, of them. There you go. And then if anybody um, wants some, I got a whole stack here. So uh yeah, you can always <laughs> do more. And there's a ton of great tutorials on the internet for origami. Oh, on this, is, this is so much more fun uh, to be doing uh, live. I would never do one if it wasn't for now. Okay. Ooh, ooh. I think um, I got it. Right. And so and then you do it again the other way. So you're just doing this. This is uh similar to some of the shapes you make when you're folding paper for a snowflake, but that's dividing the paper, and paper into thirds instead of ha uh, halves, quarters, and eighths. So, so now you've got this paper, it's got valley folds and mountain folds, and this is the beginning of the cool part of origami. You fold it so it's like that, so you want your, you want your square rather than your, your straight across folds rather than your diagonal folds mountain fold style and then so hold it down a little bit more. there we go so okay. like this so hold it so it's like this okay 
and then just kind of squish them together. So squish it along here. See how that does that? And then fold the flaps down. And you have right. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah. Good job. So that's this is one of the most basic things in origami. This is the beginning of how you fold, you know, those little um things that you do, mash note, mash things that we used to do. Okay, I'm old. I'm really oh old. yeah, no the <laughs> I love you seven pick a number. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So this is the beginning. You get a kiss, Brad. That's what <laughs> so that's a form of origami. If you can fold that, you can do some origami. <laughs> um so all right. So you've got your square, and so it's basically it's like all these little flaps. So you're gonna take one point of one flap. Oh wait, I think I'm still I'm so I want it which way now? Uh, so it's like a square. So it looks like a square. I'm going to rectangle or, or yes, a triangle. Exactly. Um, Good job. But it's a triangle oh, wait, though. No, the, so flip it inside out and it'll turn into a square because you're in a water bomb base right now. Okay. Water bomb base, square base, they're the same. So fold it in half like this. Okay, pull it in half. Okay. Like that. And then squish it together right along those diagonal folds. Okay. All right. And there you've got the square base. All right. So what you're going to do now is take one point. Oh, okay. So fold, fold two sides together. Okay. And fold it to that center line. Just fold okay. it. Okay. So so, and then you fold that, and then you fold it back like this. So, fold the flap down, fold it back. So, you're going to have something that ends up looking like this. And from the other side, it looks like. This. You fold so. this up to that fold again, like like that. Yeah, so fold it up so okay. there's like a little extra point. So it's going to kind of look like a. Oh, you want to go above the stepped oh. pyramid, yeah. And these are going to be petals on your rows. All right. <clears throat> okay, so okay, um, so just fold that one back. And then do the next one. We're going to do this to all four leaves of the kind of weird three-dimensional book that we've created. Fold it forward and back. Forward and back. And then one last one, and you can see if you're looking. Any questions? Oh, you're doing it on the other side. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, what part of Montana am I from? I am from the mountainy half of Montana. Um, <laughs> There's a mountainy half and there's a flat half that we in Western Montana, the mountain part, call uh, we call it West Dakota. Is the Eastern Montana West Dakota same thing? It's a really dumb joke. Um, <laughs> oh, see, I've messed myself up. Okay, here we go. Uh, which one of these did I do wrong? So yes, so at the end, you should have the same kind of like four petals, little thing, but they've got like all these extra points on them. I think I did. Right, and this is all the folding that you have to do. 
now we get into some of the magic. So, <laughs> I bet you guys watching didn't know you're going to be uh, watching magic. I origami is magic. So you take it, you put fingers like claw like this, like like that. One finger in each quadrant of the thing. And it is, Carol, you challenged yourself. You started bigger or you started small. So, so okay. and then what you're going to do is you're going to kind of like stick your finger in here and just flatten and flatten and twist. So. Oops, your, uh, oh. <clears throat> Trying to figure out what's the best way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just kind of stick it in there and just sort of flatten and twist. And then, so what you're aiming for is this on the bottom. And then you just keep twisting it. And twist. I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm doing it right. Oh man, that looks so good. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. All right, so you, you're almost there and <laughs> it's a little bit hard. A crisper paper works better. The, uh, the crispier your paper, the easier it's going to be. But you can see you have to go in and like finesse and put it back and finesse and put it back. Maybe because it's sticking together too is probably why it's not. Yeah, working. yeah. You're you've actually challenged yourself extra with the glue. Now I folded many. I folded like elephants and roses and lilies and stuff out of post-its, so it's totally possible. But it's easier with a bigger piece of paper for sure. And this is a pretty big piece of paper. This is like a twenty centimeter. Oh, okay. Paper. So you've got okay. this, and you just twist it and twist it and twist it until it kind of flattens out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was, uh, well, of course I wish I know. There. We all wish we were. Yeah. It's uh, so but... beautiful. I'm such a good flower maker. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you do have to have fairly dexterous fingers. I also do. Oh, I, I have very short fingers, so. Yeah, well, I mean, if you can do nail art, which I cannot do, props to you. Um, oh, it, it was, it was a, that was a year, two years that I I, I, I went I, like I can't even paint my nails to like flowers. Like some. Oh, go ahead. I watched this video of this woman in Scotland, uh, Kirsty, and she made these. She put like gel paste snakes on these nails, and there were like bubbles oh. and shit. I was like, oh man, I could I could fall down this rabbit hole easy. But I'm anyway. not like. I got to have like systems and processes to how I do it. Like, so my brain works, like I'm not good at like seeing something and just creating it on my own. I have to know the steps of like, okay, so you make this big dot here and this little dot here and that little dot there. And then that makes the flower. Well, you might enjoy I origami that for that reason. Like if you had a <laughs> piece of paper that it was following, because origami is methodical. You do it the same yeah, yeah, yeah. every fold single half time. And, yeah. Yeah. Fold this way, fold that way, tab A, slot B, which is how you make stuff like, um, this is an origami rose thing I made during my pro project. Ah, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and that's a Kusudama origami, which is modular origami mm. um, and very easy, but I keep it as a lampshade. Um, anyway, very so cool. then you can just go through on this rose. And you can curl. <clears throat> curl it. And this is where I go further than a lot of origamists do. Because I get really into shaping the petals. Mm. Um, most origamists feel like it, you know, you folded the basic shape, that's it. But I really like to, um, to finesse it and make it look more like a flower. Nancy, are you uh, making, trying to do those rows along with us? Let us know if you're. If you're stuck somewhere, let me know. And you can yeah. be stuck way back at the beginning. I understand. Yeah. It took me a long <clears throat> time to figure this out. Oh, see, this one's folded backwards. I did that myself. Oh, she's so sweet. 
She's like, nice rose, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> but like any other art, the first time you do it, it may not yeah. turn out perfect, but oh, you keep man. trying and keep uh, doing it. Here's, um, here's a like brush rose. rose. Uh, here's maybe, one that maybe I couldn't because I didn't do the right color. Um, here's, oh man, this is a, this rose made me mad. As you could tell, it's all smashed. So these are some more complicated. This is the Ishikawa variation on the um, Kawasaki Rose. And I got real mad at it, but I mastered it last night. So, okay. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so there you go. This is it. This is the Rose. And then you can do, you can do one more step that I really like to do, which is, this is fun. This is just a cool thing. You can like pull on these a little bit and push it down. <clears throat> you have to be careful not to tear your paper. Hmm. And then this is a, called a squash fold. It's a fun technique. And then your rose looks like a garden rose. It's got like that kind of secret inner center, hidden petals, shades of Georgia O'Keeffe for the queers among us. Yeah, mm. that's an origami. A lot of um, really serious origamis love to fold out of dollar bills because the ratio of that rectangle is really incredible. If you like math, Carol, you might actually really like origami because it's okay. mostly math. It's just math that makes awesome flowers. And then, so the back of this, you can fit like, um, you can put a uh, bobby pin right along here and then you can like pin it into your hair, pin it nice. on your cell. So yeah. A lot of fun stuff you can do that. Sorry that I lost you, but I felt like I was taking too long and I should finish up. Oh, no. That, it's, I'm sure it's one of those if I take my, take my time and do yeah, it. Yeah, well, and I think also, yeah, the you were using a tiny piece of paper, which I don't recommend starting small mm. on any craft ever. Don't do the tiny version first. But on the other hand, you did that, Carol, and now you can paint beautiful designs on nails, so... Yeah. <laughs> so wow. Uh, yeah. Well, I I, uh, I had an ex boyfriend that could fold. He folded a, a t shirt out of a dollar, and um, he thought that was a fun tip to leave at restaurants. Now, it's no, cute. That. It's fun, but a dollar tip is just kind of cheap. So he thought that because it was in a unique shape, it was worth so much more to the server, and they would just really appreciate it. And I was like. But we should leave some more tip besides just this cute little t-shirt you pulled it out of a dollar. <laughs> now, I actually do leave origami for uh, service for industry people all the time. But I leave actual origami that I brought paper for as well as a 20% tip. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that is the appropriate way to do it. I will absolutely. One of the great things about learning to do origami is that you can at the drop of a hat have a small token to offer people i yeah. love to right. grab a receipt and just fold someone a rose really quick and say thank you it takes me three minutes because i can do it really fast like here i'll just do this rose real quick while we're talking and i can <laughs> fold someone up a rose like this without even thinking about it and then give it to them and they treasure it i make these little elephants yeah. That I um, I should give one for you, Carol, because you drive you've driven me places. I just didn't do it. Um, oh, well, so in I six or twelve you, months, when I see you again, you. yes, exactly. six or twelve months, <laughs> uh, then uh, I will appreciate but I owe that. You a car elephant because they're like Ganesha, the Hindu oh, god, ooh. who is the remover of oh, obstacles, and I think it's a good origami for cars, a little elephant. I would love that. So, Thank yeah. you, Tamar, so much. That's so great. Uh, how many of you watching right now attempted the Origami Rose? Uh, she's going to keep making some more here as we go on to Ashley, who is here to show us poor painting. We actually, um, uh, let's see, Nancy's sharing that she's excited about the poor painting. And then also Wendy, who's just joined us as well, is... She wants to try the poor painting. I don't know if she's going to try it while you're showing us. That's going to be pretty brave here. So, um, and then, oh, Nancy's saying too that the elephants are really cute. Um, 
oh, I can't wait to see it. So uh, I'll, I'll enjoy it virtually. Well, we just got a surge of viewership here. So this might be Ashley's people. So, oh my gosh, Ashley, thank you so much. All right, let me read Ashley's bio and bring her up here. Um, uh, Ashley Smith, uh, she says, I love to paint with my friends after a long week at my corporate job. My husband and I will be celebrating a decade of marriage this May. Congratulations. Uh, we have two awesomely creative kids. We moved out here to the West Coast after six years ago from Dallas, but my son and I are originally Michiganders. I studied the sciences in college and love to let loose and just create. I'm super excited to share this easy technique with you. Welcome, Ashley Smith, everyone. Hi, guys. Um, so I'm very left-minded, like you are as well, and I really enjoy poor painting because it's a chemical reaction, right? We're going to have a bunch of chemical reactions going on here. And you can get really amazing results without practicing how to draw a face over and over and over and over. So it's a really great painting technique if you're new to painting um, and you want to play around. So I mix up a whole bunch of colors already, but I'm going to show you how to mix up one. What I use, I make my own mixing medium. So I use one part Floetrol. Um, which I already have in the cup. I figured clear cups would be helpful. Um, I'm using an eight by 10, so I don't really need a whole lot of it. So I'm gonna go a third of the Floetrol, and then I'm gonna add a third of the Elmer's glue to it. And I'm doing a three count, one, two, three. <laughs> so it's like bartending for painters. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, and the color that I have left to do is this green, okay? So I'm gonna mix well it. Wait, can I ask you while you're doing this, Floetrol, is that something people can order online? Do they've got to go and buy that someplace in stores? So, sure. So Floetrol, you should be able to get it at like a Fred Meyer, Walmart, Home Depot. You can order it online. Good. Those are good because those are stores that are still open. Okay. <laughs> it's a paint additive that they use okay. to remove brush strokes. And okay. so it's kind of like it sounds. It helps the paint flow. So okay. we're going to be using different paints that have different densities. And at the end of it, we want our finished product to be flat. So the okay. Floetrol kind of helps everything balance out. Okay. Excellent. So we're going to add some more stuff to it, but I'm going to mix it up and kind of let it sit for a minute while we do that and talk about how we prepare our canvas. Okay. Um, so I got these canvases at the dollar store. Funny enough is considered a grocery store. So you All right. can go dollar store canvas if you'd like. Um, what I do is I take a spray bottle of just plain water and I spray it down when I first get it and I wipe it down, okay? This is gonna help remove any particles that you have on it. Um, make sure it's a nice clean canvas. The particles will prevent the flow of the paint. Also, fun tip, spray the back because that will help it tense back up so that it's a taut canvas when you go to pour. So um, one of the other things, so that you have to let this dry, right? Um, so what, would, what would happen if you sprayed it with a little bit of alcohol? Would that ruin it? I'm just thinking about how people are, you know, germ uh, concerned these days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would ruin it. No, okay. alcohol, as long as you let it dry. Okay. Um, we're actually going to use alcohol as an additive. So then what I do is I take push pins. And I push them into the bottom of the canvas, into the wood. That gives your uh, canvas a little bit of lift so that the paint can drip off and it doesn't dry on the uh, surface you're drying on. Ooh, smart, smart tip. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing that I do is I take one of my colors, just base paint, acrylic paint, and I do a basic wash on the canvas. This way, if you pour and something doesn't quite get covered, you don't have a white canvas underneath. So I did all that prep work while y'all were having fun. Cool. And uh, are you doing just looks like grocery bags that you've got to protect your table there? And ah, but it yes. also looks like this is the so table that got brown grocery bags and okay. then post office boxes to okay. lay out afterwards. So I'm gonna catch most of the drips on here and then I'm gonna let it dry on something else. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, cool. Just protected my table a little bit. You could protect your clothes, but I'm not that fancy. Um, How many of you watching right now have ever done poor painting? Tell us in the comments right now as she's showing us. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the additives. We're using a chemical reaction. This is actually 
started in the 1930s by David Sequeiros. I'm going to butcher it, but I put a really Ooh. cool, I put this a really cool lesson too, everyone. There's a link in it, uh, in the chat. I think I did it privately too. So if you want to throw that in there, um, there's a really great article that explains a lot of the history and the science behind it. But uh, before Jackson Pollock, there was uh, David Sequeiros. He called it accidental painting because he was just playing with things, liquids. Um, so sometimes it's called pore painting. Sometimes it's called liquid acrylic painting. Um, but he got Ashley Dunham uh, says she's done it. Is that a friend of yours? Maybe Ashley Dunham is my best friend. Oh, uh, yeah. yep. She's giving a hands up right now. So I know, um, I know you can't see right now because of the video. Uh, also, Nancy says uh, she's really, she's done it. It's really fun to watch the flow. So we're going to add some different things to it. So the paint themselves, the pigments have different densities, right? What we're gonna do is usually dark colors are denser, lighter colors are less dense. So we're gonna layer things so that we put things that are more dense on top of things that are less dense. Mm. Silicone also helps you create cells. So I'm gonna put two, three silicone drops in a few of my colors. I'm gonna reserve alcohol as an additive to put in my clear color. Alcohol is gonna repel the paint. And but so not in your, you're not putting that in your mouth right now, or no, no, no. <laughs> Rubbing can you, can, actually, can you tell a little bit more about cells? So you said that the silicone creates cells. What does that mean? Can you show someone of your paintings or? Sure. So when oh, I might have to hold one up a little closer. Okay. I'm gonna let me add this real quick to a okay. piece. So this one here has a lot of cells in it. It's really bubbly, and I'm going to try and do this so you guys can see it. Um, okay. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Closer and closer, you guys can see there's bubbles yeah. in the paint. Like yeah. Up here, these reds and blues have a lot of good cells in them. Okay. So those cells, those uh, it's the, the paint pushing through the bottom that creates that bubble, right? So after you put the silicone in, you only want to give it a couple of stirs and you don't want to let it sit very long after you put the silicone in. I have to add alcohol to one more of my paints and then we will be ready to start pouring. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole bunch of different techniques, you guys. Um, there's a dirty pour, which we're going to do today, where you take a bunch of different colors and mix them into a cup. Um, and so to do a dirty pour, we are going to take a fresh cup. And like I said, the, the different colors have different densities. Also keep in mind, whatever you put in first is going to come out last, right? So I'm going to start with a dark color and I'm going to start with my blue and I'm just going to pour a little bit in. Now I'm going to go on to a lighter blue and I'm going to run it down the side. I'm going to grab my green and you just keep going in whatever pattern of colors you would like to use. I've never bar been a bartender, but this reminds me of techniques I've seen with like making <laughs> drinks or something. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right. So I'm using an eight by 10. I do need a good amount of paint because you want to make sure it covers all the way around. I'm just going to keep adding till I have a full cup. Add a little more green in there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my canvas. There's a couple different techniques you could do. One is called a flip cup. Uh, this one is a flip cup. It's exactly as it sounds. You take the canvas to the cup. You make it secure. You flip it over. You lift the cup up. Real quick and easy way to do it. I'm going to actually pour it. And I'm going to start in one corner and work my way over to the other corner. So it gets really messy, but you're just going to pour the paint onto the canvas. And I chose some really earthy colors because we're all stuck inside. Mm. It's springtime. This right. seems like kind of Rorschach stuff. So I have a master's degree in psychology, and I bet as you're doing this, you're seeing... Oh my gosh, what does this tell me about what's happening in the world and what shapes you see? And I know that my mom has done this where she's had some like interesting things show up. So 
All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm playing with the paint. I'm tilting it over the canvas to make sure it drips off all of the corners. Be careful as you're doing this. You'll play with the cells that you're creating. All right, so I'm going to kind of get it back to the middle there. One of the things that I learned is don't mess with it too much. The more you mess with it, the less you're going to like it. Um, one of the other things you can do is take a paintbrush and drag it up on the corners on the sides if there's some corners that didn't quite get covered. So I'm just going to lift it up a little bit, guys. All right, now here comes the fun part. All right, so this is a chemical reaction. I'm going to use my torch to speed up this chemical reaction. Woo! So uh, to... Fire and fortune. <laughs> yep, and I will bring the camera over so you guys can see it after we're done. Why, why has nobody done this technique for those paint and sip places? Like, this seems like even more fun than... Because <laughs> drunk people with torches is scary. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, you just charge more. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get my torch. You don't need to spend a lot of time on it. Ooh. How many of you right now would feel super empowered if you had a reason to have a torch? So, at you guys can't quite see it, but what's happening is I'm getting all these cells creating where the heat's hitting it. All right. That's all it takes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully lift it off. I'm going to take one of my cardboards and I'm going to set it down and then I'm going to take it and show it to you guys. Okay. So Here, how, okay, I know I'm how wet or dry is it right now? Like, is it? So pour painting. Here, let me see if I can do this, guys. Pour painting. It takes about two days for it to dry. Really. Oh, well. that's so cool. And it's kind this of what we end up with. Kind of Seahawks colors, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, back when we had a football team, you guys, but that's so cool. It's beautiful. So let me oh. finish up. Hold on just a second, guys. Bear with me. Um, I keep cloths around to wipe up with. You have to let it dry for like a good two days. Okay. Okay. Before you even want to move it, touch it. Make sure it's on a flat surface because it's all liquid, right? So it's going to continue to shift and move a little bit if it's not flat. Acrylic paints take one week to cure. So after it's been dry, then wait a whole nother week. After you do that, there's more professional lacquers you can get. Um, but what I use is this Rust-Oleum matte finish. And I spray like three coats over the painting. That way you preserve the painting longer. Um, so that way if it gets wet or dust gets on it, it's got a protective clear layer. And it's that easy, guys. Oh, give it up for Ashley, everyone. That was amazing. All right. Let's go back to, uh, I think uh, maybe Stephanie left us, but uh, I was hoping she'd hang out. So, um, all right, Tamara, any questions you have for Ashley? Usually on these shows, it's, I, I encourage everyone to interact with each other, but uh, Stephanie, I think, is is... Is, is done. She's left us for the night. So thank you, Stephanie, for being here. Um, Tamara, have I'm you ever done pour painting? I have never done pour painting other than with, uh, coincidentally enough, nail art. Um, have you done that nail art thing where you drop in the water and then you dip your finger in? I, I saw it. I never did it. It looked like way too messy. And every time I ever watch videos where people tried it, they're like, Oh, well, that didn't work. That didn't work. But I bet if I had Ashley as my coach, I might be able to actually get the nail thing out. <laughs> yeah. And well, it only works every time. Maybe I might try it again. It works for me. It's really okay. fun to drop that in there. So have you ever done anything like pour painting? It's really similar to me thinking, like, have you seen how they marble paper or silk scarf? Um, I think I probably have seen water, that. Yeah, yeah. And then you, mm -hmm. like, run a, run a comb or a toothpick across it to create those effects it's very similar yeah sort of. and yeah it is very like it can get you into a whole transcendental headspace but i'm folding you a little Whoa. elephant right now oh yay For i Carol. get my virtual elephant there that's so great oh. but yeah no i'm totally fascinated by the chemical reaction part of yeah the, are you doing situation. over the same one again actually right now yeah, or what are you so so okay. what I did is I had so much paint on the paper and it looked really cool. I took another five by seven 
and I just dipped it in it. Okay. Okay. Oh, I missed that. I was, I missed what you're doing. So nice. You're like, might as well yeah. keep going. Let's make another one. So, um, actually, um, here's a, here's a legit question. When you make all this amazing art, what do you do with it? Is it family gifts? Do you have like seven rooms of art in your house or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some gifts, some all over. It's relative. Like I knew for me painting, um, we started with more of a Bob Ross style, but yeah. my friend found a lot of pressure with trying to have a specific outcome. Yeah. And so we recently started playing with the poor painting. So usually I actually have friends over, I have a huge table um, and we all get our muses going and we enjoy each other's company. And it's really more about spending time together than it is about yeah. making money. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, hopefully when all this uh, crazy isolation is over, I, I, I'm going to come and hang out with you and uh, do my first poor painting. My mom will be very upset that I didn't do it with her, her first. But, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so great. Um, all right. Um, you guys, this has been amazing. We're going to wrap this up now. Um, I hope everyone who's been watching has had fun. I've had a great time, and I've – all I've done is make this. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, it's so cute. Oh, it is so cute. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. So the way that I wrap up these episodes is we do a lightning bolt round. I'm sorry that Stephanie's lost this already. She didn't know this was coming. Um, so lightning bolt round is the same way I end my coaching calls with my clients. Is that? Um, and those of you that are watching right now, I would like you to participate. I forgot I should ask you guys this in the past. So... Um, please share your, each, each of you as our guests and anyone who's watching right now, please share your aha, your takeaway or whatever it is that you'd like to share to wrap this up and then we'll be done. Uh, All right. I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> mine is that like poor painting, you can't necessarily control everything but you can have fun and do your best to make something beautiful. Oh, that's great. That's a great message right now. Yes. Uh, my takeaway, I was really struck by you talking about, uh, Ashley, the, um, the chemical reactions that take place in poor painting. And, you know, I didn't know anything about that, that of course, obviously it's evident once you think about it, but the, for it to be, um, that, and, and also to think about like an origami, if I flatten this out, it's like a series of folds on a paper. Math is there. The unity of math and uh, of science and art is uh, irrefutable. And we have this division in our minds that science people are one thing and art people are one thing and manual label people are dumb. You're dealing with dangerous chemicals and flames. You know, I'm doing math here to make a little creature. For all of us, the, like all of the different things that we do that we think we're so different from one another and so separate are uh, fairly facile and ridiculous distinctions. We're all humans trying to create beauty and safety and community for each other. Wow. I, okay. I need to get out. <laughs> I well, to get out. I want to, I want to share for me. It, it kind of hit me when Stephanie was talking about, or, or when she was demonstrating the calligraphy, calligraphy and I realized one of the best things about arts and crafts and just the reason we do that is because it is a mindfulness activity and mindfulness is about, being in the present moment, letting go of all judgment. There's no uh, past or future. We're not worried. We're not anxious. We're just in this moment. And it helps us detach from everything else that we're worried about. And so I feel like this is one of the most important episodes that I've had of this show in helping everyone get out of all the worry and anxiety that they're in right now is just let's, let's create some stuff and have some fun and be in the moment and just enjoying what we're doing. Oh my God, so cute. This is so cute. I can't wait to give this to you, Carol. Oh, and and maybe we have some time. I challenge you, maybe you can make a little calligraphy on it as well. I don't know. 
<laughs> I'll see what I can do. I can like okay. make a little. Key. It'll say Keto Carol in shadow letters because I can yeah. really like be like Stephanie. Okay. Although I okay. have messed around with it a little bit, but yeah. Oh, thank you to all of our guests, Ashley and Tamara, for being here and sharing your gifts. Oh yes, I love the. Uh, uh, this, way. <laughs> this is another good one. This is I love this. Look at the person on. Look at the and and then you hug yourself. Yeah, I'm giving you a hug right now, Carol. Mm. Hugging you, hugging you too, Ashley. Even though I've just met you, because yeah. we're allowed to do non-physical hugs. Yay! <laughs> I know I'm a hugger. This is killing me, you guys. I'm such oh, a I know. Thank you all for being here. If you've enjoyed this show, uh, please give us a thank you in the comments there, as well as give us a thumbs up, a heart. Um, we're right now we're live on Facebook and YouTube. So give us some comments and all that. The greatest compliment you can give us is to share this with other people. So share this. Um, I'm going to be live the next five days straight as well. So come back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about how to maintain a positive mindset, how to uh, stay optimistic at this time. I've got another three guests tomorrow. So come back and we'll see you all soon. Thank you to my guests and everyone who's watched. So we'll see you soon. Bye.